fixed and variable cost students, but still a small kind of recap. Fixed costs, they do not change, right? They are supposed to be fixed. So we are, of course, talking within a given range of output, within a given range of time, etc. Say rent would be a fixed cost. We don't expect, if I make one unit, I will pay a rent of uh, $1. If I make 50 units, $50, $50. It's not like that. There is a, a rent. Maybe I pay $10,000 a month or I pay $1,000 a month. Whatever it is, that amount is fixed, irrespective of the uh, volume of my output, correct? <clears throat> Since the total fixed costs are fixed, an increase in the output results in lower, lower cost per unit since the same cost is spread over larger number of units. Yes or no? So since the total fixed costs are fixed, when there is an increase in the output, there is a lower cost per unit. Because, why is that? Because the same cost, Yes or no? The same fixed cost is spread over larger number of units. For example, if suppose the fixed costs are 200,000 and the variable costs are 10,000 units. So, sorry. Fixed costs, 200,000. Variable cost for 10,000 units is 500,000, right? So, the total cost is now 700,000 and the cost per unit is dollars seventy. Correct? If the number of units became <coughs> 15,000 units and the fixed cost remains at 200,000 but the variable cost would be now 750,000. So the total cost is now how much? Uh, 950,000. Cost per unit is 63.33. Of your students, two hundred thousand plus fifteen thousand into seventy now you have to make the calculation, students. I hope this is correct. Will you check this out, please? That the variable cost for ten thousand is uh, correct. A, a ten thousand units is five hundred thousand, so for fifteen thousand units, it's seven fifty thousand. Plus 200, so 950. If I take the total cost per unit, is 63.3. So the variable cost per unit remains the same, but the fixed cost per unit falls. Therefore, the total cost per unit comes down. Correct? What about variable cost? Variable costs change proportionately with the change in output, like direct material, direct labor, sales commission. So variable cost per unit is fixed. The variable cost per unit is fixed, right? <clears throat> and the total variable cost increases with increase in output. The PV ratio can be increased by lowering the variable cost or converting the variable cost into fixed cost like in the case of outsourcing. So sometimes uh, we will, when we have large variable costs, there is sometimes an option that they, they, they remove the variable cost, they could make it fixed cost so that the greater the volume of output, that the per unit cost can come down. Of course, that's a call to be taken. But nevertheless, you understand that the PV ratio can be changed, can be increased, can be improved, right? By lowering the variable cost. <coughs> the classification, mind you, of costs into fixed and variable may be affected by the time horizon. Over a longer period of time, the fixed cost change and become variable, right? Over five years or ten years time, all costs might actually change. Shorter the period, more fixed the costs are. The classification of costs into fixed and variable may also be affected by the range of output. A machine may have the capacity to make 200,000 units, but if you were to go beyond that, if you have to make more than 200,000 units, then you have to get a new machine, therefore your fixed costs now suddenly jump. They will increase substantially, correct? Total fixed costs do not change, <coughs> increase or decrease with increase or decrease in output, right? So the total fixed costs do not increase or decrease with increase or decrease in output. But fixed cost per unit varies depending on the number of units produced. The fixed cost per unit will increase as the number of units produced decreases. Fixed 
cost per unit will decrease as the number of units produced increases. Variable cost per unit is fixed but the total variable cost changes proportionately with the change in output. Directly proportional, right? It increases proportionately with increase in output and decreases proportionately with decrease in output. Clear? This is the relation. This is what happens with fixed and variable cost. Okay, students. Now, let us look at the graphical presentation of the break-even point. The break-even point chart is a graphical representation of the revenues and costs at different sales volume. Okay. It helps to pictorially depict the break-even point and the margin of safety at different levels. So, when, whenever we look at a graph, we are able to understand, grasp a picture. It's after all a pictorial depiction. When we look at different numbers, we may be able to understand the, the margin of safety and other such things better. So, we could draw a graph. So, we will show you the BEP chart now. The number of units are plotted on the x-axis and the dollar values are plotted on the y-axis. That's how we draw the chart, okay? Then, then we draw lines representing the fixed cost, the variable cost, the total cost and sales value. So that we know what is the loss area. We know the loss area, the profit area, the BEP and the margin of safety. It may be noted that the revenues and variable costs are linear in nature. This being one of the assumptions of the BEP analysis, linear, they all, um, they are all, uh, the variable cost per unit, for example, is fixed, right? It's not that if, that if you're making large number of units, you get an economy of scale, economies, you get to benefit from the economies of scale of production and it may come down. It's not like that. It's like as if it's a straight line. Fixed cost is supposed to remain fixed throughout, right? So that way, all these lines are actually straight lines. <coughs> Look at this students. This is our BEP chart. <coughs> you you uh, understand this. The blue line, this is your revenue chart. Let's look at the table. This is the information that we are using here, right? Uh, the same table that we are doing. So let's take the blue line. The blue line is the revenue line. Now, if you make zero units, your revenue is zero. If you make say 2000 units, that this is 2500, somewhere here, if you make 2000 units, right, then what is your revenue? Your revenue is 50,000, right? Here, when you make this is 2000 units, your revenue is, <coughs> our revenue is 50,000. Then, when you make 5000 units, that's here, blue line, your revenue is 125,000. Here at this point. Again, when you make what is this 250,000, uh, 10,000 units, that is 10,000 units, this is 200,000, this is 250,000. So, with the help of these lines, we have plotted the help of this, these points, these coordinates. Remember, x axis is number of units, y axis is the dollar value. Based on this, we have drawn the revenue line. Okay. Then let us look at this. What is the red line? Red line is the fixed cost. What is fixed cost? This is 50,000. Whether you make 0 units, 2,500 units, 5,000, and whatever you do, the cost is going to be fixed cost is the amount of 50,000. So it is one straight line like this shows your fi fixed cost. Next you have the variable cost. Variable cost, 0 units, 0 cost, right? <clears throat> but uh, for each unit, how much is the variable cost here? It's 15. If you make 2,000 units, like here, 2,000 units, then your variable cost is 30,000. Look at this, 30,000, right? 2,000 units. Again, <clears throat> if you make 5,000 units, it is 75,000. <clears throat> We're talking of the yellow line. Seven. This is 50,000, right? This is 75,000. Similarly, if you make 10,000 units, it is 150,000. This is so taking these points, we plot a line and we get the variable cost line. This is variable cost, this is fixed cost, right? Therefore, the green line now is the total cost. The total cost is this green line here. <coughs> this difference is exactly 50,000. You understand the difference of fixed, fixed cost? This is parallel. This is parallel to the, to the variable cost line. Exactly by 50,000. Correct? Now, this is total revenue. 
this is uh, this is uh, total cost correct so what happens at these points see these points if you notice revenue is only so much right but uh, say for example here for example your revenue was 50000 your total cost your total cost was uh, i'm thinking it was 80000 what do you say students 80000 here yeah? so there is a loss here right you go like this this area narrows down and at this point we are indifferent so this is your break even point this is your break even point where total cost and the revenue line intersect after this point if you see see the revenue is now higher this is actually your your uh, profit area this can i say this area this all this this is your loss area shall i take it like this this is your loss area yes or no students this area is entirely your loss area and which is your profit area this area here now this is your profit area correct this is your loss got it this is loss this is profit this is break even point clear followed <coughs> If I draw one line here, right, if I draw a line here, any sales above this point, from this point, that is your margin of safety, right. If I draw a straight line here, this is my BEP, then above this, that is my margin of safety. <coughs> yeah. What about CVP analysis and taxes? We have always been considering profit before tax. But it could we could consider it for after tax also if if it is given to you right that you want uh, profit uh, profit after tax figures of so much we can always compute depending on the tax rate what is the profit before tax and then do the same thing right taxes are unavoidable so to calculate target profits it's not the operating income but we want the net income after taxes that we are interested in not to worry net operating income after taxes may be represented as so can i say it's operating income minus the income taxes profit after tax is equal to profit before tax minus the profit before tax into the tax rate correct or if i take this common then i get one minus tax rate rearranging what is pbt equal to therefore it is <coughs> profit before tax is equal to profit after tax yes divided by one minus tax rate so say for example if we get take something like this xyz boards manufactures special art boards at a variable cost of dollars 50 each and plans to sell them for dollars 90 each the company has estimated a fixed cost of dollars 850000 and targets an after tax profit of 600000 assuming a tax rate of 40% how many boards should the company sell to achieve its target profit. So what is the difference here? The only thing is that they have said it's an after tax profit of 600,000 therefore with a tax rate of 40%. How difficult is it now to calculate what is the required profit before tax? Yes or no students are you following? So your target profit after tax 600 so profit before tax must be 600,000 divided by 1 minus 0.4 or 600,000 divided by 0.6 equal to 1 million. Followed, you can use x and solve. Solve it anyway students, it doesn't matter. Yes or no? <coughs> you can say the profit before tax should be x. Therefore, is it clear? <coughs> this is 100. 100 minus 0.4 is equal to 0 0.6. This is equal to 0 0.6, therefore what is equal to <coughs> 1, what is equal to 1, whichever way you want. Uh, here the formula has just been given to you, that's also profit after tax is nothing but profit before tax divided by 1 minus tax rate. Solve, you get 1 million. Total target contribution, since I want 1 million as my uh, profit before tax, my contribution would be the profit plus fixed cost, that is 1.8. 85 million right 
Do I know the contribution per unit? I do know the contribution per unit. That is 90 minus 50 equal to 40. Therefore, how many units do I need to produce? 185, 1.85 million divided by 40, I will get 46,250 boards in order to earn this profit after tax which was given to me. Yeah.